a problem when you can't tell that but for real with the first clip um are we supposed to be impressed or something like you can obviously see your wrinkles the mole uh the age in your skin but I, I get it you're right in front of a light like it's going to make you look like you're just stepping into the sun i, I don't get it who are you trying to impress but anyways the uh compilation we have here today gentlemen is uh dating after divorce Oh, sorry, and the 5% of women that watch this channel. Why are you here? Either way, I could have seen you, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, let's get, into the, uh, let's get into the compilation and roll the intro. tricked women get played it is a difference girls get fed all of these pipe dreams and these promises and the guy never delivers on them instead he breadcrumbs her just kind of give her just enough to keep her holding on so she can get whatever it is he's promising whether it's commitment or resources or whatever it is and she relinquishes that in hopes that he will deliver on it eventually that's not what a woman does he looks for the deliverables okay so even though this same man may run off on the woman and the girl the woman has a little less baggage because she's not walking out of anything with a deficit. I've been played. I've never been tricked. And when somebody plays me, I be like, bye-bye. Encore, do it again, baby. Fly me and the kids out again. Support my business again. Take me to the Michelin star restaurants again. Show up for my family. Mentor my nephews. Do that all again. You earned that. You did that. This is why we can't be too hard on ourselves because at the end of the day, no matter how soft you are, how feminine you are, there are people with more game than you. That, that know how to run it with like with supreme execution i won't be mad at me when i got got i got got by a big boy a big boss that's it because here's the thing you've shown me that you know what it takes to earn a woman like me so now you're making a conscious decision to not do that again whatever i gave you that's yours to keep baby you earned that but thou shall never taste it again that was uh an interesting flex i guess but I was like, okay, she understands how guys run game. Good for her. However, she's just letting herself be used for it and is just turning it into a flex or something. I don't really, I don't really get it. To me, it just looks pathetic. Um, but hey, you do you. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Hopefully there's a bit more sense in it. I'm mad at myself because I allowed a man to get my hopes up knowing the shit that he did to me before, like he wasn't gonna do the shit again. I'm fucking mad at myself. I'm mad that I actually believe that he wanted to spend time with me, wanted to be my friend, played in my face, and I keep making the same fucking mistakes over and over again. And I've been sitting in silence all morning, like I've been like meditating, kind of just like going through my thoughts, you know, got a lot going on. And um, this is why I'm closed off. This is why I say back to myself. This is why I stay in the house, because I can't just keep putting myself out there. And everyone's like, that's how you're supposed to meet somebody. No, fuck that. Leave me alone. <laughs> just leave me alone. Please. I'm asking nicely. I just wanted to then I really don't get what the point of that video was. <sighs> Work on yourself and get back out into the dating market? But if you keep on making the same mistakes over and over again, then you're just stupid. No other way to put it. Don't really know what else to say for that next clip. I'm just a little bit dumbfounded. Maybe the next one will have something in it. 
tell you I put myself back on a dating app. Here's what I'm doing differently. I'm just saying, I'm just saying I'm doing differently is I am not looking for matches. I am waiting for the matches to come to me, right? So then if they like me, and it's only on one app, it's a free app. If they like me and I think it's a match, I'll like them back. And then I wait for them to do the conversation. <laughs> I wait for them to start. It's like crickets. They don't start. I'm not starting the conversation, people. It's kind of like if you open the door for me. No, wait, that's a bad analogy. It's kind of like if you wave to me and I wave back, you're waving to me because you want to start a conversation, I would think, but you're not. You're just hanging out. I don't care. I'm just going to wait. You're probably going to. All right. Well, that's clearly not going that well for you. <laughs> Uh, it would be good to have a little bit of initiation or if you get a match, you know, try to have something to say, like at least say hello for God's sakes. Some people are just horrible at opening, especially even on our side. I just don't know why anybody watching would want to be in that situation. <sighs> Come on, man. I think you really should not be waiting around at your age. I mean, this is dating after divorce. I assume that woman's in her 40s or maybe even 50s. I honestly can't tell. Either way, let's get on the next clip. I think I'm crazy, but I think situationships are wonderful, especially the ones that absolutely break your heart. And the reason I think that is because they are a master class in self-love. You see, when you're picking someone and you're giving your heart to someone, your energy, your time, your attention, your affection, and they're enjoying all those gifts and not meeting you halfway, you're forced to choose. Do you keep giving that love to someone who doesn't treasure it, who doesn't want to keep it safe, or do you finally choose to love yourself? And most of us, once we get through the heartbreak, we pick ourselves. And that failed love story becomes the greatest teacher. We know what we will never tolerate again. And we start working on ourselves to heal the parts of us that accepted less than we deserved. I'm polyamorous. Yeah. Oh, man. I think we're in for another one in this next clip. But uh, yeah. Wow. Um, this woman falling head over heels for somebody who just wanted to have some fun um really shows how when they get up here you know they just lose their complete sense and just fall for anybody that <laughs> shows them the time of day uh yeah wow uh, some of these clips are mind-boggling i'll be honest with you guys they just don't learn they really just don't learn after years of experience they don't learn. Gotta be terrible to be dating uh, women this age. For those of you out there, my condolences. Let's move on to the next one. Apparently polyamorous. And my husband and I recently separated after I met somebody. I'm Allison Ray. I'm an adult film performer. And here is the tea, part three of why I'm getting divorced. Something that Bob gave me that I wasn't getting in my other relationship was feeling desired. I didn't feel desired in my relationship with Cody. And reasonably so, because he was on set all the time, having a lot of um, physical relations with people, and he's tired. I wanted somebody to be thinking about me, and that's what I got from Bob. All of a sudden, I had all of this attention that I had been craving, and when Bob said he wanted to break up, I... I was devastated and I didn't want to lose that. So I don't need to flirt with anybody right now. Like if this will make you feel more secure, like it's fine. Like I can just focus on you and Cody and that can be enough. In hindsight, I shouldn't have done that because I know I'm a flirt and I did both myself and him a disservice in telling him that I didn't have to do that. I should have held my boundary of like, this is who I am. And if that doesn't work for you, okay. Like we don't have to be in each other's lives. But I was so afraid of being alone at that point in my life that I, I just wanted him to stay. And I probably would have said anything to make him stay. 
and I are our relationship. There was a lot of me telling him, you're my soulmate. And it really felt like it. It really did. I also believe in multiple soulmates, by the way. I think different people come to us at different times in our lives, and I don't think they're always romantic uh, relationships. I think there are just people we're meant to meet to teach us something. And I felt that with him. So in the same time that I was telling him all of these sweet things, that he's my soulmate, um, I was also telling him, I'm crazy, I'm a handful, are you sure you can handle me? Wow, uh, so much to unpack here, and really quite an example of things, um, of how she pretty much admits that her polyamorous relationship is because she wasn't feeling desired from her partner, um, I guess her husband. Uh, so they decided to open things up, which I think is an absolute terrible move, and instead he should have just divorced, or she should have been honest and divorced him to move on to this next person. It really um, baffles me that people choose to get into these relationships. It usually ends up leaving people very hurt and this is definitely the situation. Um, don't know why anybody in their right mind would marry an adult video performer. Oh my lord. But, you know, uh, you reap what you sow. And uh, I've been prattling on long enough. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something here today. If not... Um, do leave in the comments things you'd like me to cover or go into, and I'd be more than happy to. But for the time being, it's been 12 minutes. I hope that you enjoyed it in some way or learned something. Always do your due diligence so that you don't end up with women like this that push for polyamorous relationships. Yikes. And have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.